there was a little girl named Violet, and she was visiting her grandmother in the countryside. Now, Violet loved to play outside in the beautiful, fresh air, while her grandmother sat by the window inside spinning her wool with her little cat, Lily Bell, playing by her feet. Now, one day, grandmother asked Violet to go out to the garden to collect the last of the winter vegetables. So, Lil Lily Bell and Violet walked out to the garden with their harvest baskets, Lily Bell scampering right behind Violet as she walked through the tall, waving grass. And Violet got to the garden and saw that there was plenty to harvest. There were lots of beautiful vegetables there. There was broccoli and cabbage. And what else? Cauliflower. And cauliflower and all sorts of good, delicious things to eat. She was putting them in her basket and pulling carrots out of the ground and getting all the vegetables from the garden. And by the end of the day, she was so tired. She just had to sit down for a rest. So she sat down with Lily Bell in her lap and started to pet her. And Lily Bell was purring so softly and beautifully. And just as Violet's eyes drooped close, she heard a sound off in the distance. She heard a sound singing. Pink in the garden, pink in the glen. Pink, pink, pink. Lady Spring is here again. And Violet opened her eyes and there she saw Lady Spring with her beautiful paintbrush painting the trees with cherry blossoms, painting flowers over the rolling hills. They were beautiful flowers of every shade of pink you could ever imagine. Light pink and dark pink and bright pink. Light. Even some beautiful whites with hints of pink and peaches. Yes, she painted all these beautiful colors. And Violet looked at Lily Bell and said, oh my goodness, have you ever seen such a beautiful thing? And just then, a little cherry blossom fairy flew over to Violet's nose and tickled it and told her, Violet, darkness is near. You must be heading home soon. And Violet realized, oh yes, the sun was going down. She better hurry home. So she picked up her baskets of all the harvested vegetables, hurried home as quick as she could to show everything she got to grandmother. Grandmother was so excited to see the vegetables that she whipped up a delicious harvest dinner and put it in the oven. And while they were waiting for it to cook, she told Violet that they should go outside. They went outside just as dusk was turning to darkness and night was falling on the countryside. Violet looked up in the sky and she saw a tiny little shimmer First a shimmer, then a glimmer. What was it? And then it moved across the sky. It was a shooting star, Grandmother said. Violet had never heard of a shooting star. Grandmother told her that shooting stars were good luck. And when you saw a shooting star, you had to make a wish. So Violet and Grandmother closed their eyes and made a wish. Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might, have the wish I wish tonight. And before Grandmother could tell her that you're not supposed to tell your wishes out loud, Violet blurted out that she wished she could take Grandmother home with her and keep her with her forever. For that very next day, Violet was due to return home to her house in the city. And she would miss Grandmother in the countryside very much. Well, Grandmother told Violet, Well, sweetheart, I think there might be a way. I'll show you tomorrow. So the very next day after breakfast, Grandmother called Violet over to the kitchen table. And she pulled out some of the wool that she had spun and dyed. She picked out the most beautiful shade of pink, just like the cherry blossoms that Lady Spring had painted all over the trees. She took the very delicate wool and began to stretch it apart like so. She stretched it 
long and thin, long and thin. And then she found herself a mold that looked like a heart. She took the mold and put it on her wool pad. And she took her pink wool and began to lay it in the heart like so. She laid one layer this direction. Then she pulled another beautiful layer of wool and laid it the other direction. Then she laid one more this direction and began to fold the wool in so that it all was tucked inside the form. Then she told Violet that she was going to take a felting needle and begin to make all of the wool go inside of the form. She began starting on the outside, going up and down, up and down. Up and down, up and down, move the needle up and down, not too fast, not too slow, move the needle just like so. She started all around the outside of the form, going up and down, up and down, not too fast, not too slow. She moved the needle just like so. She moved it all around the outside until all the wool was tucked right in into that heart-shaped form. Then she moved to the middle and started felting in the middle. She pushed the needle just so that it hit the wool pad. Not too far. Just enough to stick, it, stick the wool right onto the pad. When she had got it all into the form and it began to take shape, she peeled it off and she flipped it over. Then she did the same thing on the other side. This process takes a lot of patience. She told Violet that sometimes it's nice to have a friend to help. So she told Violet that if children would like to help, they need to wear a special glove because these needles can be very sharp. So Violet put on her glove so that she could help too. Once the heart begins to take shape again, if grandmother flipped it over one more time, and then Violet got to take a turn. Up and down, up and down, move the needle up and down. Not too fast, not too slow, move the needle just like so. And then grandmother did it again and she kept on going. They kept going and going until the heart began to take shape. And when it was all finished, grandmother took the heart, gave it to Violet, to Violet, Keep this heart in your pocket, for I will always be with you.